Hey, I need to talk to you. Oh God, what do you want? Listen, I was talking to Dealer and I've set us up a battle back in NZ after No Swimming 3. What? I said, I was talking to Dealer. Yeah, I heard what I you fucking up. said. Oh, well, okay. Our opponents aren't being confirmed yet, but we're definitely going back to New Zealand to have a battle. Oh my god, why are we going back to that fucking shit all of a country? Why are we going back to a country full of shit reject battlers? Seriously? Are rejects? Are you fucking kidding me? Bro, there's a lot of dope rappers in the NZ, man. Those battlers are sick, man. Oh, They're really good. Shut the fuck up. They fucking suck, bro. No, they don't. Okay, what about D&D? Typical that fucking fat islander. Fuck all you boomers. You fucking curry munching, useless fucking mouth. <laughs> Yeah, 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 even I can't deny that one, yeah. Yeah, nah, so, yeah, you're right. yeah, that's true, that's true, yeah, he's good, he's good. Yeah, yeah trust us to be the most restless yeah, one yeah, out of all. Yeah. Mm. Man, I think D-Lar's doing a great job for the scene, man. He deserves a lot of respect for what he's done. You know, oh, man, he's man, just done Fuck so d bro! What about my respect, bro? What about what I did for that fucking scene, bro? You know, where's my respect, huh? What about me? What do you mean, where's your respect? It's your fault the country hates us! What?! What are you talking about, bro? What do you mean it's my fault? What the fuck did I do? Hey, New Zealand, kiss my fucking ass. Fuck you, New Zealand. Oh, yeah. And if you want to talk about the worldwide battle scene, well, you pretty much screwed us there when you called one of URL's most respected, if not the most respected battle rapper, a short black nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And while you were battling one of the best battle rappers in the world, if not the best battle rapper in the world, Man, fuck that fucking terrorist fuck and fuck that coon cunt. Listen, look, we're going back to New Zealand bro. whether you like it or not. Now we've got to figure out a plan to get the fans back all again. Right, right, we've right. got to earn their respect back. Alright, calm down, calm down. Alright, don't worry. I got a plan. Alright, I got a plan. Alright, you got a plan? Well of course I got a plan. I'm a devastator. Who the fuck are you, bro? Alright, check this out. Now, about a week ago, I created a documentary called The Five Years of One Hour. Okay, now basically what this documentary is about is what the title says, five years of one hour. Now, what we do is we release this footage on YouTube for the fans and the battle rappers to see. Now, once they see this documentary, they're going to have no choice but to accept us back. They're going to love okay, the documentary okay. so much, they're just going to be like, yeah, Devastator, thanks, bro. Thanks for making this documentary, okay, man. Okay. You didn't have to, but you did. Okay, okay, alright, alright, okay, okay. I'm liking this, I'm liking this, okay, okay. You know, sort of like slime our way back in, you know, to their respective hearts. <laughs> Anyways, now, once that happens, alright, we've basically got all the fans and all the battle rappers back in the palm of our hands, okay? Now, what we do next, oh man, it's the beauty part, alright? So basically, I'd say maybe a year or two, you know, three years tops, what we do is once we've gathered all the fans and all the battle rappers in the palm of our hand, you know, about a couple of years later, this is what we do, man. This is the best part, alright? Here it comes. This is the genius of my plan, alright? So we've got them all there in the palm of our hand, right? You know, they'll do anything for us. They idolize us, they worship us, and then out of nowhere, bro, you know what we do next? Alright, what do we do next? What's gonna happen next? We just go bang! Bang! You fucks! I don't give a fuck about you, you fucking stupid fans! You don't fucking deserve my respect! Fuck off! Yeah, and then we're back to being hated again. What do you think of that? No! No! We're not gonna do that! We already did- you, No! That's already been done! We're not doing that again! Oh, come we're on, stop being a fucking fan! No, we're not gonna do that! No! We're trying to- It's a fucking genius idea! Okay? We're not, no, we're not gonna do that! <sighs> God, yeah, I knew you were gonna say that. Hey, wait, wait, go, go back a bit. You said something about a documentary? Yeah, I made a documentary. What documentary? This documentary. The five years of one hour. In full detail, a history long in the making. Egos versus egos. Battle rappers are formed in the city of Auckland. One out New Zealand where it was all started. Years ago, in 2010, One Out was formed by Spearman. The league brought out many entertainers. People came along to be entertained, and that's what they got. People came from all sides of Auckland. They loved the battle rap culture and what it was. that couldn't be matched. A 
skill set hard to acquire. No room for the weak. No room for mercy. For five years of one ounce, created by Devastator. So when you look back on the one out series, five years of one out, this is just my opinion. This is no one else's opinion, it is just mine and mine alone. Whatever your thoughts are about this league and the people that created it or helped create it and a part of it are for you to think alone, all alone, wherever you may be, but this is the best of where it comes from. This is the five years of one out. One Out was formed back in 2010 by Spearman. He created the whole league. I just jumped on board as the director slash video editor slash best battle rapper he had at the time. And uh, it was actually a good event, the very first event. We had it out in North Shore. Uh, the first battle of the day was myself and Mike Pipes. We kicked it off really, really strong, man. I, I do believe we set the standard for the entire country on that, on that day in that battle. Basically, what we were trying to say is like, you know, like, this is how good you have to be. We're going to set the standard and you got to try and either match this or top it, or at least try to get up there with this type of skill. And like, the battle was just so good, man. Like, I came with a lot of jokes. Pipes came with a lot of bars and personals. I just did what I did, you know, a lot of crowd reactions from both sides. Uh, in my opinion, it was a really good battle. Basically, we both had a point to prove. We were just, you know, we got in each other's faces. Uh, neither of us choked. Neither of us stumbled. We just had a really good battle overall uh, and when me and Pipes had that battle sort of like we we just you know got it out there to the people and we were just like yeah man like we're pretty good man you guys can't beat us we're pretty good we, and we are and even to this day we still are the 34 on your shirt stands for how many dicks you suck an hour Whoa. right you're not down with soap but still I take you to the cleaners because you have absolutely no idea what personal hygiene is uh, the other battles of the on the day were they were all right. They weren't too bad. You had uh, you know they weren't too bad. You had battles like XC versus for original. You had Toki Cones versus Dila. Uh, you had battles like Stuntman versus Tane. You know most, uh, those two don't really show their faces anymore. I don't know where they are these days, but you know it was good to see them at the first event. Uh, we also had Zippy versus Projectile and Projectile versus Magics. Uh, those battles weren't that great to be honest uh, and um, I also had another battle on that day against take one and um, yeah so uh, that was the first event a uh, pretty good event I, I'd say box cutter helped out with the filming uh, I directed and edited all the videos spearman hosted and yeah that was the first event after that, me and Pipe started working together quite a lot. Uh, we, Before the second event came around, we actually did a few street promo battles. Uh, it was me versus Barry Bonzer. That was one promo battle after the first event that we did. We were just trying to build up more hype for the next event. And um, also, me and Pipe went for a road trip down to Welly. Uh, we battled down there. Uh, we also set up another promo battle before the second event, which was after the Clash of the Titans event in Wellington. Uh, it was me versus Jay Rocha. Uh, who was formerly known as Jabberwocky. He's battled in the old school days back in 2004-2005. We were supposed to battle in a park, but it actually rained on that day, so we ended up going into Mike Pipes' garage, and we just did the battle there. I had more delivery and more powerful presence than Jay Rocha, but Jay Rocha, he's sort of on that calm tip, but his lines are very, very good, man. Like, he's got some intelligent stuff going on in his head, man. He's He's got really good lines, and I actually liked a lot of his lines. I just came in with my simple joke style like I do. I try to be funny all the time. Uh, but uh, I did come with some personals as well against them, and I used them, and I try to make them funny. I did my freestyle game like I do. I say your verses need to be restarted with a thin black pen. And as for your image, well, that penguin hat just makes you look as retarded as you did back then. <laughs> you say stupid shit like lolly banana and tuna daisy. That's poppycock. You're a novelty battler. The shit you are saying has got to stop. And sorry, I see you tried to get inside a bin with a guy called Freeheart. You know what probably makes your mother really depressed? The crap music you make with the spearmint of death. <laughs> But um, yeah, and basically after that, that's when we built it up to the second event from there on. And uh, what happened was uh, the second event came around. Both 
Uh, it was a pretty good turnout. We went to Bass Reserve in the city. Uh, the first battle of the day was myself again versus Mike Pipes, but this time we had backup. So it became a two on two. And it was Mike Pipes and Barry Bonzo versus myself and Spearman. Now, I gotta give respect to Pipes and Bonzo on their teamwork effort, man. The way they structure their rounds, the way they practice together, the way they just like back each other up. Yeah, so let's do it like this. Daylight, all good. XC, sweet. Devastator, faggot. Spearman, faggot. Pokey, all good. Box cutter, sweet ass. Devastator, faggot. Spearman, faggot. XC, um, D&D, &D. um, Devastator, faggot. Spearman, faggot. My, faggot. The left thing, faggot. Faggot, faggot, faggot. Fuck off. <laughs> Myself and Spearman, we we don't have we didn't have that type of um, you know partnership connection. Me and Spearman have always been freestylers. We've always been fanatic freestylers. We just like basically to prepare for the battle to us was just like, hey bro, you bring some lines, I'll bring some lines, and I'll see you on the day. Have you ever come two siblings born as rapist white fleas? They grow up to be racist white cheese with faces like these. <laughs> and when you were young, you used to say shit to mum like, I can't sleep. There's a scary monster all over. And she was like, no son, it's just your future. Husband. <laughs> and you know that's pretty much how we did it and whatever we could flip we just flip plus 10 cents says devs has never ever even seen a green vegetable i may not have seen a green vegetable but we all know you've seen dean's testicles <laughs> <laughs> Business, so like a red bank account, we show you bitches no entries. When you got a bank account with zero dollars, you don't get no interest. I don't know who to go for, to be honest. I think Pipes and Bonza might have just edged it. But at the same time, man, me and Spearman, we had our flip game pretty held down pretty tight. And we had some good lines going. But overall, just good battle, man. That was a, that, that, That's how you got to start an event off. you got to start it strong. And what better way than DMN versus my molesters, man? Yeah, and um, after that, basically, the second battle of the day was D&D versus Toki Cones. Man, that, now talk about... A, Battle just full of entertainment, man. Now these two are just hilarious. I'm in your bad dreams, like a world with no pies. I hope you get diabetes and die. Cut getting punched at lunchtime for his fucking lunch money. I wish I saw your mother pregnant, I would have stabbed her in the tummy. <laughs> It was just the way they took the piss out of each other in this battle. Like, they just, you know, D&D &D was just mocking him about his weight, and that uh, Toki Cones was just like, you know, you better stay in the car when I'm getting on the piss. Plus, he has baboonish wits. Meet Toki Cones. He's a balloon with tits. <laughs> <laughs> If I wanted my cut back, I'd scrape it off your mum's chin. <laughs> uh, the other battles were alright, they weren't too bad. You had uh, Feriginal versus Surreal, that battle was, uh, you know. You had uh, Sid Arthur versus Codebreaker, that battle was, uh, I like Sid Arthur's presence and his, uh, his passion of delivery, that's actually really cool. Uh, you also had Stuntman versus Boss Cutter. Boss Cutter was hilarious in my opinion. Stuntman was, he was alright. He sort of has that nervous approach about his style. Box Cutter is a freestyle beast, man. He he hardly writes. Uh, he he might have, he jots down a few lines, but that's about it. And then, then he'll just come to the battle and he'll just like freestyle most of it, you know? And he'll just put on such a good performance that you just can't help but laugh. It's just entertainment. Exceed versus Projector. Uh, Exceed clearly took that. Uh, no second doubt about it uh the main event okay uh that was me versus dealer uh, now this battle man was this has been a battle that has been building up for like almost four to five years uh because anyone who knows me and dealer will know that about a stilo and cypress corner now if you don't know what a stilo or cypress corner is then you're obviously not from auckland because you can only listen to it in auckland uh what what it was was there were two separate radio shows on a monday night and a wednesday night now what you do is you ring up and you can actually battle another caller or you could just ring up and spit a rap or do whatever you know but but uh, the main thing was battling you know you two callers ring up and they just battle each other man and that was me and dealer uh he was actually called dealer Luster back then his old name was the luster and um basically it was me and that guy just battled and battled man for like three to four years straight it was only like three years later when i actually met him face to face you know you battle someone for three years man like almost every week you're just constantly battling this guy man and just like having battle after battle after battle man i thought i was battling an instinct but instead they took me 
possibility of being tied as intellectual. They get looked after by people who aren't even going to be there at a funeral. Hey, they lost her. I'm busting the train, and it must suck to be you. Because you've been on the channel of spring for so long, you fell in love with your broom. Hey, yeah, they yeah, lost yeah. her. Yo, what's up? Oh, see, the, right, the, right, I mean, right. that's what I'm looking for, huh? That was good. Yes, sir. I, you know, at, at least he been genuine and reasonable, okay? Come yeah. on, dude. Like, get at it. Yo, come on, man. You look like Ben Laden. You ain't allowed to go 100 meters inside a kindergarten. <laughs> come on, man. You got an explaining order. And you're your father's daughter. Trent popped an order from your family. So you meet you ain't even allowed to go to Mainly. Oh, uh, yeah. shit. Yeah. This is how I fucking rap it, G. My raps are free. You just die on the paper, Mr. Devastator. All that was just a build-up to our battle at the second event you know because finally after all these years of battling each other on the phone and battling each other on the stage with mics we finally met in an acapella one-on-one -on -one, man because your yeah. face looks better covered than avocado so stop <laughs> acting hard joe devastator you'd still be soft even if you ate 10,000 grams of taro yeah. why does this retarded rejected no talent do smelling stupid dumbass imbecile crack poor whack or from mad war rap yeah. You yeah. fucking switch! Yeah. <laughs> this guy loves sucking dick! And I'm on their headhunter shit! Snitches get stitches! Bitches! Yeah. Yeah. And you might be a fucking body guy born with white skin, but that doesn't mean you're quite in. <laughs> you're the rat type, you dumb clown, your dad's white, your mum's brown, and they gave birth to a fat guy from Tom Town! Uh, that was pretty much the second event. Uh, we actually, uh, the third event, we actually had another promo, a sort of a promo mini event uh, before the third event came around. We uh, we got an Australian guy to come over. His name was Johnny Trash, uh, Jay Trash at the time. He actually had two battles. Much respect to him for actually coming from Oz to New Zealand. So when he came over, he had a battle. Uh, he teamed up with D&D, &D, and uh, they teamed up to battle d and Spearman. That was actually an alright battle, wasn't too bad. Uh, not much presence and powerful delivery going on in that battle, but it was still overall pretty cool. It wasn't too bad. Uh, the crowd reactions weren't really happening for them. But uh, I do think like Dila probably had the best presence there on in that battle. Like uh, Dila was pretty cool in that man. He was very staunch like he is, and he had a good vibe going with him. Spearman, you know, with his shades on, he always seems a bit nervous when he battles. You know, he looks up and he does this. And he does. He doesn't even know where he's looking half the time. Uh, D and D was pretty funny. I like D and D's lines. J Trash was pretty cool as well. Uh, they just I don't know. Their their lines were good. They just didn't have the presence and the delivery, in my opinion. But there was. That was an alright battle. Uh, the second battle of that day was me versus Trash. So Trash actually had two battles on him that he had to prep for. And man, I just pretty much plowed through him. Like there's just no no point in even judging it. Like I killed him in that. I, I did what I do, man. You know, I came with my jokes. I came with entertainment. I made everyone laugh. Everyone was cheering. And it was good, man. Like I pretty much killed that battle. And um, you know, Trash was he was pretty boring in that. To be honest, uh, you could tell he was nervous because he already, he had to prep for two battles. And you, the crowd sort of was wasn't really feeling him much but you know when I jumped on I just killed him I didn't care you know I didn't care that he had two battles bro I'm here to battle and I'm gonna fuck you up pure and simple rotten fruit rotten vegetable rotten plant rotten ivory and finally rotten tomato sauce and of course mustard and salt thus the result <laughs> And yeah, the third event came around. Uh, we had it in West Auckland to Pike Park, Lincoln. It was actually a really good event, man. I thought this was a pretty cool event. Uh, we had a lot of dope battles on the day, man. Uh, this was the event where quite a few people made their one out debut. You had Talented Steven. He made his uh, first appearance at this event. You know, you had Hex coming up from New Plymouth. He made his uh, debut here at uh, one out on the third event. You had Disease from Hamilton. Uh, he made his debut at one out at this event. You had uh, Rivalous, who was also an old school a Stilo Cypress Corner Battler. He made his debut at this event. Uh, you also had g Out. g Out made his debut at this event. You also had Lacusta. Lacusta made his debut at this event as well. First battle of the day was Friginal versus Tane. Uh, that battle was, I don't know, that was all right. Uh, it wasn't too bad, I don't know. It was pretty, I guess it was all right. Uh, the second battle was D&D &D versus Exceed. Ah, oh, man, that battle was pretty cool. Exceed wasn't really on his game in this battle, man. D&D &D pretty much just plowed through it. D &D, I'm gonna get wild. Then I'll take his Indian bitch, slum doggy style. <laughs> 
third battle, that was uh, Magix versus Codebreaker. Uh, that battle was alright again, you know, that was not too bad. Uh, I don't know. That battle, though, was, I don't know, it was funny, but it was like, it was just funny for the wrong reasons. <laughs> like, a lot of people were laughing. It's just like, it's like they were just being stupid because I th actually think Codebreaker and Magix didn't really like each other. I think they actually, like, I think they actually hated each other, like, personally in real life. <laughs> uh, the fourth battle was Dila versus Take One. Uh, Take One was another old school Steelo Cypher's Corner rapper. Uh, Dila pretty much took that easy body bag in three. Uh, no point in judging. Uh, fifth battle was Rivalous versus Sid Arthur. Uh, that battle wasn't too bad. I actually like Sid Arthur, man. His delivery and presence is very powerful, and I like that. His lines are very simple, but yeah, he's got that energy to actually still be able to entertain you. Uh, Rivalous was pretty cool. Uh, he was, wasn't too bad. That was his debut. He had some all right lines. He had some bars going up in there. Uh, the sixth battle, whole oh, box cutter versus surreal. Man, this is like the second highest viewed battle in one out. Like it's over 70,000 views this battle. And to me, it's I reckon it's because of box cutter, man. He was hilarious in this battle. <laughs> Fuck box cutter was hilarious. He was just like dropping all these funny Indian lines, bro, and everyone's just cracking up. Even I'm cracking up while I'm holding the camera. I don't even have one, but I have a tight grip. I'll make this fucking cunt disappear like I turned off the light switch. Box cutter, man, freestyle beast, bro. He just, he basically murdered Surreal on that day. Uh, it was just the easy body bag. One, two, three, game over. Uh, battle number seven was Disease versus La Pusta. Uh, Disease came up all the way from Hamilton, man. Much respect to him for doing that, for getting involved. Uh, like, out of towners are always welcome at One House, man. Like, you know, they're always welcome. And Disease, you know, he came up, man. He paid for his own, he paid his own way to get there and he represented. Uh, the battle was okay. Uh, I don't know, I, I haven't actually watched that battle in a while, I, I don't remember much about it. Disease was actually pretty funny, he still had that funny vibe to him, even back then. Lacusta was just, to me Lacusta is just a god man, like that guy just does not rhyme, and that's what makes him a fucking god in my opinion. I mean, you gotta look at it this way man, like, what rapper on the earth doesn't rhyme? Lacusta does the one thing that no rapper, like I'm serious man, like how many rappers are there on this planet? There must be at least a million. There must be at least a million MCs. And Lacusta is the only one who doesn't rhyme. You know, that I've seen anyway. If there is someone else out there that doesn't rhyme, well, I've never heard of them and I've never seen them. I just know of Lacusta. And to me, man, Lacusta's a god, man. Like, <laughs> that's god shit, man. Like, he doesn't rhyme. He doesn't rhyme. Fuck like your amazing fires. I'll rip your mom's Benny off. Yeah! They get dirty and shit. Spit on that. <laughs> Open that body like the Moses at the Red Sea. You know all about it, you're too <laughs> If there's one thing that every rapper has in common, it's that we rhyme. And he doesn't rhyme. <laughs> Legend. Now, the main event. Me versus Higgs. Man, this... Oh, man. Much respect to Higgs, man. Higgs is actually an old-school vet from back in the days. He He's battled people like Mareko. He went to Oz and represented over there. So I sort of got that same vibe when I battled Jay Rocha. Like, yeah, sweet. I'm battling an old-school veteran, man. His old name was Higgesus. Uh, these days, his name is Higgs. But, oh, man, this guy was... Uh, he was good, man. Like, he was really, really impressive, in my opinion. Yeah! Honestly, you'll die if you get any bigger, bro. You're so hungry, you can smell a honey before they dig the hole. Wow, this guy's... He's good, man. This, even to this day, in my opinion, Higgs has the best pen game. Like, no one can outright him, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, though. Like, a lot of, there's a lot of good writers, man, but I reckon he tops everyone in New Zealand. I can answer that question, G, but my only suggestion, B, is that this pathetic flea throw some balls, go to court, and get an erection, please. <laughs> Uh, and, and like, yeah, man, this battle was just good, man. Higgs just came with a lot of funny stuff, which was actually good, which is actually the way you're supposed to battle Devastator. Like, you got to bring funny stuff if you want to battle Devastator, man. You can't be too serious against, 
um, you know, stater. Because, you know, that's what I did as well. I brought a lot of jokes, man. I just came with my jokes. He came with fat jokes. I came with short jokes. He's a lucky guy. He's Kentucky fried by the bucket load. He drinks pickle juice and he's too fat to touch his toes. Definitely body bagged me in that one, in my opinion. Like, I choked it up hard. Straight up! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bro, fucking hell. Um, he probably might have even edged it, even if I didn't choke. Uh, the judges probably would have still given it to him, man. He deserved that win, though, in my opinion. He was really good. His lines were great. <clears throat> we also had another couple more promo battles after the main event. That's when G-Dow made his debut against Zippy. Uh, Zippy is like Zippy the Hun, man. Good friend of mine. Good dude, man. I would always trust his opinion. I love listening to his opinion. I like it when he judges a battle because he's real. And, um, you know, G-Dow was pretty cool in that, too. Like, he made his debut. He made his presence felt. You know, G-Dow uh, still comes back to this day. He still battles to this day. And that was his debut. You know, he sort of made a strong impression, which is good, because first impressions are everything. And, yeah, I remember G-Dow was actually really good in that battle. Zippy, uh, Zippy wasn't, you know, he wasn't quite on the level of G-Dow. But Zippy is Zippy. Zippy has his own style. Um, there was also Toki Cones versus Exceed. That was, that was pretty funny. That was all right. It wasn't too bad. And then the last battle of the day was actually a two-on-two, -two, which was me and Hex versus Talented Steven and Rivalous. So that was really good. You know, he had the two main event guys that had just finished, like, tearing into each other. And now we're teaming up to battle two West Westsiders. And this was Talented Steven's debut. This is where he made his first appearance. To be honest, I think me and Hex smashed them. Like, we were just too good with our freestyle game. Our freestyle game was too good for them. Talented Steven, you could tell he came with written bars, like he had a lot of written stuff ready to go. Yeah, that, that's talented for you. And just like the other events, um, after the third event, we set up another promo event. Uh, we had this one at the university in Auckland. We had it in the big park. The, the actual battle was supposed to be me and D&D &D versus Exceed and Spearman. But Spearman actually dropped his nuts, you know, like he just like, oh, no, I don't want to battle anymore. You guys came prepared. Well, of course we came prepared, you idiots. It's a bloody battle. It's like, uh, hello, it's a battle. Uh, we set it up a few weeks ago. You're supposed to be prepared, you idiot. What were you doing? Me and D&D &D were preparing. What the hell were you doing, Spearman? So basically, Spearman just ditched Exceed on that battle because he was scared of us and just left Exceed, you know, and actually Deasties actually jumped in to have the battle with Exceed and I much respect to Deasties for us because if, if Deasties didn't jump in, the battle wouldn't have happened. But anyways, the fourth event. This was the OMAC event. Uh, this is the event where I actually got us the hall. I got us the venue for this one. This was actually a really dope event in my opinion, man. I think this might have been one of the best events. Uh, the, there were some good battles on the day. Uh, the first battle of the day was D&D versus Virginal. Uh, Virginal just got... He got wasted, like, D&D just killed him. Uh, Frigginal was just too drunk on the day, and, like, to me, that's just, what an idiot. You know, if you're going to show up to a battle that pissed, you know, it's just like, geez, why did we even put you on the card for? Like, seriously? You know, he even likes to go around with the excuse, you know, oh, I was pissed, you know, I was drunk, I was drunk. And, you know, my response is just like, bro, you're a grown man. Nobody forced you to get drunk, you know. You, why, why would you drink before the battle, bro? You know, have your battle, then get drunk afterwards, you moron. And D&D showed up sober, ready, had that fire going, and he just killed Frigginal, man. Frigginal just got wasted. Frigginal, though, actually had some good lines going on for him. He actually did manage to pull off some good reactions, but D&D was just too much fun. Oh! Then you had the battle of the day, in my opinion, which was Box Cutter and me. 
me versus box cutter man now the way this battle came about was um spearman actually hit me up it was about two or three weeks before the event he goes um hey bro you want to battle box cutter and i'm just like uh can you give me someone who's more on my level because like box cutter he's funny and he's he's got good lines but he's always unprepared you know he's always you know he he, he stumbles a lot you know he sometimes he doesn't even know what he's going to say next so i actually said can you give me someone who's more on my level and what spearman did was he actually told box cutter that i said that and then box cutter got pissed off and box cutter actually rang me and he seen i'm just like hello and he's like what what so you think i'm not on your level eh? you think i'm not on your level eh? i'm just like uh yeah you're not you know i was just being straight up man i was like yeah you're not on my level cunt what the hell what are you getting angry for he's like i can beat you i can take you and i'm just like bro i'm gonna fuck you up bro i'm gonna destroy you bro and he's like yeah yeah you think you're dope bro you think you're good i'll waste you you know that was box cutter's attitude he was just like boom boom he was just skitting out at me and i'm just on the other line just like oh yeah you reckon bro and then he, he in, in the end he just hangs up boo, doo, doo. and i'm just like oh this cunt's gonna get fucking destroyed and basically that's what i did <laughs> Like I'm just, I just destroyed him, bro. Like I fucked him up, bro. Especially with that prop rap. That was the best, man. In my opinion, man, that's the best prop rap ever. You ain't gonna win this ancient tussle because you ain't made a muscle. And if you don't believe me, just ask box cutters Asian uncle. I just killed him on that. And if even he actually had some good stuff going too. He had some really good lines. He had a lot of funny stuff. The crowd was feeling him too, which was actually good, man. That's good when uh, the crowd are feeling both battlers. You battle. Yep. Instead of this shit, you just think of eating battles. <laughs> While they were judging, he goes, yeah, you, you wasted me, bro. Fuck it. I'm just like, oh, you know, of course I did. I told you that's what that's what was going to happen. You know, I told you that was going to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's going to you beat me, eh, cunt? Fucking the corruption. Now you won. Fuck. Yeah, of course I won. Congratulations. Yeah, fuck, you lost, though. <laughs> um, you had Siddhartha versus Surreal. Uh, that battle was okay. A lot of good presence in there. Siddhartha, once again, with that energy that I like. Uh, you also had Deesties versus... <laughs> this battle... <laughs> Shit, this battle was hilarious. <laughs> the next battle was... Um, you had Deesties versus Jesse James. <laughs> I have to be honest, like, much respect to them, but, like, these guys sucked, man. These guys were useless. And they dropped the end bomb. Nigga on Bluetooth. You niggas wanna know about me, homie? Yeah, I'm finna kill it. We are not niggas. We shouldn't be using the nigga word. Nigga is a bad word. We are not niggas, brothers. We are not niggas. Do we look black? We are not niggas. There was also two on twos. There was actually two two on two battles that went down on that day. Uh, before the event happened, it was actually supposed to be a little two on two tournament. It was actually, there was two battles. There was me and Turkey Cones versus Rivalist and Dealer. And then you had Spearman and Boxcutter versus Deesties and Lacusta. Now what was supposed to happen was the winner of those two battles was going to battle the other two. So what happened was Boxcutter and Spearman won. Uh, me and Toki Cones pretty much won. And we were actually supposed to battle each other. But then, you know, Spearman once again, he does the whole drop thing. And he's like, oh, no, we're not going to battle, bro. State is too prepared. Because I had actually told Toki Cones that, you know, like, you know, on Facebook before the battle, I was like, don't worry, bro. I got the two-on-two -two covered. I got eight I got eight pages of written, bro. <laughs> no one's going to top our team, bro. I got us, bro. I got us, bro. And, you know, Spearman heard about that. He found out. And Spearman's like, oh, no we're not gonna battle you anymore it's like are you serious bro that's like twice you've done that now yeah this is julia roberts and Aaron brockovich but i don't know which is which listen kids isn't this ridiculous us two battling two people with syphilis on your freaking lips you midget chips what happened was that turkey cones actually took that battle down yeah i've beaten both of these guys before so this <laughs> is like deja vu check out turkey cones stomach bro where's the baby due to me it looks like maybe in a day or two and then when Cones actually told me, he goes, oh yeah, man, the rest of 
I sucked, you know, like you were the only good one. And I'm just thinking like, what? And that's why you took it down? It's like, yeah, bro, let's just forget about how I feel. Let's just forget the fact that I practiced hard for like a month and you guys didn't. But yeah, you know, you, Ravelous and Dila sucked, but I didn't, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're a weak, hopeless nutter. You're a cheap, hopeless brother. And the only time you two get a hit in life is when you deep throat each other. actually re-uploaded it back to YouTube. I uploaded it to my station channel and I was like, sweet, now it's a station battle now. Uh, yeah, man, another good thing about this event is that we had recommended dosage there. Uh, we had Hookbanger and Prestige. Like, man, much respect to those dudes for actually showing up, you know, and paying to get in, you know, to watch some battles, man. And they were loving it too, man. You could tell they were big fans. And even to this day, they're still big fans, man. They still show up. Much respect to those dudes, man. Shout outs to recommended dosage, Hookbanger and Prestige, man. Much respect, brothers. fifth event we didn't actually have any uh many events in between the fourth and the fifth uh the only battle that was uploaded was me and original we had a we had a freestyle battle in otara where i just killed him off easy like there wasn't even any point in no judging man i killed him he set the battle off too he came out and dissed me he tried to be cool in front of all the otara g's <clears throat> like, like all the g's there we were just all drinking and original just comes out and disses me what happened is well that uh we had a freestyle battle while uh, we had a freestyle in front of the camera um, Friginal dropped the rap and it was actually really whack as fuck, it was so lame. Headquarter, Chairman, Channel 3, Anchorman. Well, what should I say? I wiped your way off the planet like the tsunami that did to Japan. Oh. Fly like Peter Pan. I live in Neverland. <laughs> And then I jumped on and I spat a rap and everyone's just cracking up. Yeah, you gonna take that, shit, Devastator? Bro. Devastator. No, bro. Am I gonna take that? No, I'm gonna rape that. Rape that. Oh. I'm gonna pull it out of my brain and then drop it to a Japanese bullet train and then run away. The bro city was from Neverland. <laughs> I'll leave your fucking ass a cripple so you can never stand. <laughs> Number 21. Now let me tell you about my worst day. It's when nobody actually showed up to my 21st birthday. That's right. Lyrics, I got plenty more. If original gets all angry and jealous and he just comes out of nowhere and just disses me straight away. Just like, boom, bang, hits me. I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah, you wanna go? You wanna go, Arab? Yeah, you wanna go, you little terrorist fuck? I just fucked him up big time, you know? He, he had no chance. Yo, his name is Devastator. Yeah. She's fucking fat, he got him shot in the elevator. Oh! I couldn't fit in the elevator, but you could because you're the doorman. <laughs> so you want to be racist and all that shit? I came to show respect. That one you didn't see that one coming, so you best to take your terrorist ass out of this country and start running. Oh! Look at your face, you're not even close to being stunning. Look back at the ground because you're a white guy that looks brown and I'm getting sick of you, so go back to your terrorist town. Oh! 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 And uh, then the fifth event came around. In my opinion, man, the fifth event was a fail, man. Like, this event was actually really, really whack. Uh, the only good battle on the night, in my opinion, was Talented Steven versus D&D. &D. It was a Saturday night, and, you know, the, the location was wrong. Like, Spearman chose the wrong place. Uh, we had to use mics, which, in my opinion, is whack. I hate using mics if, if it's an a cappella battle. So we had to use mics. The second battle on the day was Take One versus Exceed. Uh, that battle, yeah, it was pretty, I don't know, pretty lame. It was alright. Uh, the next one was Me versus J.O. Uh, to me, that was pretty funny. We had some pretty good lines. I choked it up in the third. Uh, J.O. beat me easily. Uh, J.O. man, he, he goes by many names. I call him Relic because that's the name I know him as. That's when I met him. He was Relic. Uh, he also went by the name Smoke. The next battle was Dila vs Stuntman. This was Dila's fifth win in a row. Uh, that battle was okay, it wasn't too bad. Not much to say about it really, but yeah, Dila took that easy. Like five wins easy for Dila. The other battle was Sid Arthur vs Deesties. Once again, Sid Arthur with his energy, man. I really do like the energy he brings to a battle. So after the fifth event, we set up some more street battles. There we had a two-on-two. -two. It was me and Nick 
DC versus JO, and it was supposed to be JO and DD. And um, DD actually, um, something actually happened in his personal life and he couldn't make it. And But what happened was, well, we ran into some random guy on the street. His name was Scud. He was just like, hey, you guys are those one out battlers. And I'm just like, yeah, bro, sweet. You want to you wanna come for a battle? We need an extra person. <laughs> and then Scud actually just jumped in and was like, sweet. And I was like, thanks, bro. And um, yeah, so that battle happened. Uh, obviously, me and Exceed won that. J.O. was still really good in there, though, man. J.O. still had his lines and like, he's really good. Scud, obviously, he was whack. He was useless. But like, like I said, much respect to him for actually jumping in or else the battle wouldn't have happened. So uh, that was actually a good battle. What actually happened during that battle was Jay Williams actually walked past during that battle. Um, like you asked Exceed, you asked J.O. Like that Jay Williams literally walked past it while that battle was happening and I'll never forget it because I was looking right at him. It was actually um, J.O. and Scud were actually rapping at that time during that round. And Jay Williams literally just walks up. He just He's there with some person. He's just sitting there watching this. He's standing there and I'm just standing there like this. I'm just looking. I'm like, holy shit, is that Jay Williams? And then, you know, after like 10 seconds, 10 or 15 seconds of Jay Williams just sitting, standing there watching, he just walks away. <laughs> he just like, he was there for like 10 seconds, just like, hmm. and then shoop, he was off. <laughs> he just gaps it straight away, and I just remember thinking, yeah, hey, thanks for the support, Jay. Awesome, bro. Thanks, bro. The next promo battle, the street one, was me versus D and D, um, and yeah, we were in Pucks's garage. Misk was there as well. Misk was has always been a fan of One Out. He was always actually coming to the old events when I was around. He, he battles these days, but he wasn't battling back then. Uh, Pucks was the host. Dealer held the camera for us. He filmed it, and yeah, basically it was just us five in the garage and Pucks's garage. And yeah, me and D, me and D and D just dished it out, man. We just yeah, we just fought it out. Time is money, so you're costing me green. Honestly, G, you shouldn't be rocking with Dean. You're a fucking Mary. Go stick your kids in a washing machine. Oh, oh. fucking vampire. You like biting, don't you? This is Chi Chi fighting Goku. That means you're my bitch and nobody here would like to know you. Oh. I'm hitting batties till they faint. Listen, faggot, you ain't great. You smell so ratty, I can faint. He smells so bad, his shit can't wait to escape. <laughs> When I spit linguistics, I shit on misfits. You're a stinking big bitch. This white devil is a mean fake. I bet it bite meal till his teeth breaks. Try to settle for some cheesecake, cause no rhyme you bite will ever out rhyme rhymes better than these, mate. Uh, a lot of people say D and D beat me because they thought I was pretty lame. My jokes were lame, but what they didn't actually understand was because D and D is—he's been known as a biter. Like everyone knows that you know D and D, he bites lines. He he bites lines. So what I did, my first two rounds in that battle were all D and D lines. I don't know if anyone actually realizes that, but my first two rounds against D and D were just all his lines. Uh, at the end of my second round, I actually say, um, so how does it feel? Biter, knowing they know I bit your shit and they'll still consider me a real writer. That was my like only line that I wrote in my first two rounds because that was the whole that was the whole point. I was biting all his lines in my first two rounds. The third round came along and I and then I just went with the biting angle. That's when I wrote all my biting lines from. Those were all my original lines. And yeah, man, good battle, man. Overall, I do feel like it was. Uh, I reckon it was a draw in my opinion. That's a good battle. It was a good battle. And one week later, we had the tryout event. This was the very first tryouts. This was where, um, this is where we, you know, introduce new people. We give them, we let them come in, all the new talent, and they just basically they just come in and see if they're good enough to to battle at the main events. You know what I mean? So uh, this tryout was actually pretty good. This tryout event. Um, it was where people like Scholar had his debut. Scholar's debut was at this tryout event. Uh, Crude. He had his debut, uh, Deathwish, uh, he had his debut there as well. Scholar's debut was against Ryan Minister, who's actually from Papakura as well. Uh, you know, I thought I was actually the only one until Ryan Minister came along. And then, you know, it was a good battle. I do feel like Scholar took that one. Scholar took that pretty easily to me. Scholar's lines were very, very good. Uh, the other battle we had there was um, there was Crude versus Foriginal. Uh, Foriginal pretty much took that pretty easily. Uh, you had uh, Deathwish versus uh, Deathwish versus True. Uh, True was another guy who made his debut on this day. You know that battle was alright. It wasn't too bad. Then you had um, Zippy versus Surreal. Uh, Surreal pretty much took that though. That was that was an okay battle. Uh, the main event was me versus Barbaric. Now how this battle came around was. Um, 
I'd been looking for a, an opponent the entire week, you know, the entire week. So I'd been looking for an opponent for ages, and you know, I'm like spamming, like, give me an opponent, bro. Like, you found anyone yet? And he's like, nah, not yet, not yet. And then one day before the event, you know, we had the event on Saturday, and on the Friday, Spearman hits me up and he goes, hey, bro, I found you someone. And I was like, oh, sweet, bro, who? And I'm like, sweet, bro, who? And he's like, oh, this dude called Barbaric. And I actually feel like it was set up, to be honest, because, um, you know, it was a one day prep battle. Like, I was told one day before the event. And if you actually watched the battle, Barbaric seemed like he was like fully prepared, man. I'm just like, whoa, this dude must have practiced for like a whole month or something, man. At the first sign of blood, that's when the nerves arrive. How can you look so dumb? How can all at once when your breath arrives? You still maintain the right crap, then rehearse the lines. That's when I get in my zone, rip his head until I bust the pipes. I'm real fan. This ain't new to me. Raised by friends and slaves by mutants. You were born in this world just to lose to me. Come on, mm. boy. He had good URL style lines, you know, his presence of that URL caliber was pretty cool. It was a very unique style, like I've never seen anyone, you know, rap the way he does. But he just couldn't keep up with my flip game, man. My flip game was just too good, it was too on point, I was too funny. <laughs> Hated. You just got SF on your shirt, which means you're so frustrated. <laughs> yeah, I'm scaring him. He's nothing. Why would you be fearing him? He's bluffing. With your name, I'm guessing you're trying to be a barbarian or something. <laughs> devastator man you've got to be funny you can't be too serious you can't be you know you can't be on that url vibe man you've got to bring entertainment man because that's what i'm gonna bring i am gonna bring funny shit i'm gonna like i'm gonna make the crowd laugh i'm just gonna have them pissing their pants i'm gonna have them cheering and if you and then when it's your turn if you come on and you try to be all serious the crowd's just gonna be like you know uh, you know, Devastator just made us laugh our ass off and now you're here doing all the serious stuff. You know, the crowd's just like getting restless over it. It's just like, uh, you even see Talented Steven yawning in the background, you know, and then, then I jump back on again and I'm just like, bang, bang, funny, funny, entertainment, entertainment, joke, 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 crowd laughs, crowd cheers, boom, game over. Barbaric just gives up and I win. We also had AT versus XP, which was sort of a lame battle. It uh, wasn't very good. We had uh, Talented Steven and Hazard. Uh, Hazard came up from Kai Tire, or oh, came down from Kai Tire, sorry, I believe that's where he came from, he was from far up north. Uh, there was also Zippy and XP, they were the other team, and um, Talented Steven pretty much bodied the entire battle. Uh, just no second thought about it, no question, Talented Steven body bagged everyone in that battle. Nobody could keep up with his performance skill, nobody could keep up with his bar game, he was too good in that battle. Oh, this guy's a faggot hard! His girlfriend <laughs> came up to me and he said, Steven, can I ride your thing? <laughs> What about your boyfriend? She, he was like, oh, his thing is mine or thin? So I grabbed her by her love handles and drive the bin. All night she was screaming, big is good, mine or ten. <laughs> I set up a promo battle with Surreal. Like I went to Surreal's neighborhood. I went to his his hood in Odahu. Uh, G that was the host, and um, I pretty much wasted Surreal. Uh, I actually stumbled a bit in that battle. I lost a few of my lines. Um, my flip game actually wasn't very on point in that one either. But um, I pretty much wasted Surreal in my opinion. Surreal once again coming with that gangster type of flow, that serious stuff, you know, trying to get in my face and be all gangster. And it just doesn't work against me. Now we had the best event, man. In my opinion, this event, the sixth event, I, I truly believe this may have been the best event ever in one outs. Like, this event was so good. First battle, we can have our son, man. Don't tell them that I stink of person, I smell like crap, it's a beautiful feeling. I live in New Zealand because I'm moody. So we had our battle, I fucked him up, he had no chance, he wasn't prepared well enough, I just killed him, I, once again I just came with my funny shit, I was entertaining, the crowd just went nuts for me, they were cheering, they were laughing, and then Stuntman jumps on, tries to bring bars and personals, and the crowd were just not feeling it, he choked, he stumbled, he just, no good, no good, I just killed him easy. This man's stuff, man, say you're back with this man's stuff, if there are any ladies looking for a vibrator, you can fire one up this man's cunt. Also had um, Barbaric vs 
versus Virginal. Uh, that battle wasn't too bad. Virginal was pretty funny in that. Uh, Barbaric was actually a lot better than he was against me. So that was actually a good battle too. I liked it. Uh, you had Toki Cones. Oh man, Toki Cones versus Disease, man. This is probably one of my favorite battles, man. I loved this battle, man. The Cones! He was so hungry for this battle, man. I've never seen Toki Cones perform like this ever. Even to this day, I, I still believe that Toki Cones has not outdone himself from this battle. I watch all of Toki's battles, man, and this one was definitely his best performance ever. <laughs> And uh, Disease came up from Hamilton, man. Disease is hilarious, man. He's got such a unique style to him. I like that fast stuff that Disease does. He likes to speed it up and then... It's like he's got this real, like, type of posh gangster double time type of style to him and I love it. I think it's really great and it works for him. Hey, 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 hey. Some loud moldy dude hosted it. I don't know who that was. What's up motherfuckers? Battle motherfucking three for you fuck faces! Oh, talented Steven versus Basic One, man. Oh, Basic One, bro. What a beast, bro. Like, what a what a monster of a battle rapper. He just killed Talented in this one, man. This was actually Basic One's debut. And man, first impressions, bro, he just tore the house down, man. He just ripped it up. He basically stole the show on that day. He got the loudest ovation on the day. What that photo is, um, a lot of people don't know that Steven is actually an actor. And when actors sign up to an agency, what they do is uh, the agency actually puts them in a studio with a camera with a camera person, and that camera person takes photos of them. And um, what they do is they they tell you they go, okay, give us a happy give us a happy look, and, you know, and so you'll give them a happy look like yay, and then they'll go, okay, give us a mean look, and so you'll be like, okay, mm, you know, you'll give them the mean look, and then they'll go, give us a serious look, and then you'll be like, you know, like that. And that's what Steven was, he was an actor. So he had all the facial shots on his Facebook. So what Basic One did is he went and grabbed the smile one, the one where his talented was smiling. Because everyone knew that talented Steven was a in your face type of battler, man, the crowd just went nuts when they saw that photo, bro. And it was just like, whoo, damn. This is like, yeah, it tore the roof off, man. Just tore it off. Big, easy body bag for basic one. Uh, you also had Scholar versus g Out. Uh, this is South Auckland battle right here. You had Odahu, that was g Out versus Scholar from Otara, 274. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you battle another punk from South? I bet anything with at least one score from the same house. <laughs> I didn't join for Otara and Odahu to link up. This type of bust I would fuck with any Saturday and drink up. Now I've heard of a handicap match, but not a match with a handicap. <laughs> it's when the people with Down syndrome begin to battle rap. Oh. Hey, you wanna know what else I think's funny to me? Is how the fuck you even get this damn monkey to speak? <laughs> Scholar pretty much took that easily. Uh, G Dow had some good lines, man. He had some really good lines, actually. But uh, G Dow's confident level was, wasn't quite there. His presence uh, wasn't quite there. Also, then the next one we had Spearman versus Exceed. Uh, this was actually a very controversial battle uh, because a lot of people thought that Exceed won. A lot of people thought Spearman won. In my opinion, but this is just my opinion, I actually thought Spearman won because Spearman made me laugh more. I'm always about the entertainment, man. I'm I'm always about the jokes. I love jokes. I like laughing. Laughing is just great. I love it. So if you can make me laugh more, I will always vote for you. You know, a lot of people like to judge based on bars and that, and that's cool. You know, that's their opinion. I like to judge based on entertainment. Like, if you can make me laugh, bro, I'm, I'm voting for you. And um, basically, Spearman came with a lot of jokes, which is cool, man. You know, he was good. Exceed had a lot of 
person was in a lot of bars. He was trying to get under Spearman's skin, you know, like he was like trying to bring up his kids. Talk more shit! I'm gonna make an idiot and they could use Luigi as a fucking sex slave! Time for oh. He tried to bring up uh, his past losses. YouTube says it all! You want a piece of me? It's a senior ring when I beat him, see you lack decency and hate the fact that you are smoked by DD. And then there was Sega! It was good. I liked Exceed's presence. Exceed was very, very powerful in that battle. He had a lot of delivery going on. Spearman, once again, he doesn't have that very powerful presence. He's just on that kickback stage, you know, still looking around every time he tries to rap. You know, he's still looking over here and then he looks over there. In saying that, I still do think Spearman won because he made me laugh more. That is called being a faggot. It's like the 33rd degree. How the fuck are you going to verbally murder me when anybody here at your dairy would get away with verbally perfectly? <laughs> What happened with the judging was um, D and D. I, because I held the camera, you know, I walk over to the judges and I sort of select them. And um, I actually walked over to D and uh, walked over to D and D, and I, I, um, I put it in D and D's face. I said, "All right, just judge, bro." And then he, he actually voted for exceed. And I remember thinking, like, "Oh shit, wait, hang on a second. I shouldn't actually let D and D judge this because him and Spearman weren't even getting along back then. They were sort of beefing with each other as well." And so I just thought to myself, like, ah, oh, shit, maybe that's not very fair because, you know, D&D &D might be just voting for Exceed because of Spearman, because he doesn't like Spearman, Spearman doesn't like him. So I actually, what I did was I actually sort of cancelled out D&D's vote and I went to someone else. I didn't actually, because there was five judges, uh, Spearman won 3-2, three, 3-2 two. Three, two, uh, decision, split decision. And, you know, the D&D's decision would have actually given exceed the win but what happened was like uh i didn't allow exceeds uh D and D's decision because of the hate that him and spearman had for each other so i do feel a little guilty as well about that because exceeds should have won but then i was like oh no man i can't let D, &D judge this we all know he hates spearman we all know spearman hates him it, it would look biased in my opinion so i actually went to someone else I went to Talented Steven. I, I was like, oh, Talented, you be the final judge, man. Because it was actually 2-2 at that point. There was 2-2. So it was one more judge. Uh, whoever that judge voted for got the win. So, you know, um, and I went to Talented Steven and Talented just went for Spearman. And then I was like, all right, Spearman won it then. Did I do the right thing? Did I do the wrong thing? I don't know, man. It was, it, it, what it, it's what it is. The last battle of the day was uh, Dila versus Charisma. This is where Dila took his first loss. And it was a well-earned loss. Like, Charisma actually took that easily it was a good win on charisma's end uh this battle was supposed to happen at the fourth event but it ended up happening at this event instead uh d -Lark came pretty good he had some good stuff going on he had that powerful presence like he always does charisma in my opinion was just too much for d -Lark, man charisma's an old school cat as well uh charisma actually beat me at cunningham shield uh, like charisma is very good man his pen game is excellent like the way he just structures it the way he delivers it man he just he was just too much for Dila. Dila sort of still had that simple vibe going on with the simple lines um, you know the just the simple basic multis where charisma was just like far he had it all man he had bars he had jokes oh, yeah. I came for your winning streak. You battle new rappers, I only ever battle second seas. Then dudes ain't reputable, you do it for the victory. But it only takes one slip and never to prove that you ain't shit to me. Oh! I do like the way he brought up all the old school cats. There was one part in Christmas round where he brought up all the old schools and said, you know, that he brought up all those names, which was really cool. See, I'm seven titles deep in the South as me and Roach. Sammy Gallows comes to third, Jay Dobbs will get a vote. AK City, Heaves and Rex, both legends in the sports stuff, and then it can to Rex, also Rick with Deadly Force, but you, you ain't shit, and that respect was never yours, so your career from this day forward is a dead and buried course. He pretty much took that battle easy. That was Dila's first loss. So Dila had a record of five wins, no losses. A battle that was supposed to happen was Jay Rocha versus Heggs. Now that battle didn't happen because Heggs pulled out. I don't know why he pulled out. Um, I don't think he ever actually told us why, but you know, he pulled out for whatever reason and you know, Jay Rocha didn't even bother showing up. So that's that, that's that event. Another good thing about this event was, uh, man, we actually had, very very popular rappers show up we had tyson tyler from silverback gang he showed up man he's been a mad supporter of one ounce since the beginning he actually showed up man he showed support he came and judged battles you know he actually judged some battles he judged my battle as well man much respect to tyson tyler and um yeah man he and ever
ever since then he's been coming to a lot more events which is really good man like he has a lot of respect for the battle scene in New Zealand and you can tell he's a big fan another one was actually Tyree Tyree actually showed up and watched as well so that was really really good like wow we got MTC man we got MTC in the house you know I remember thinking like where's young Sid and Deech man like oh where are the rest of them bro why is it only Tyree here you know and I just remember like actually walking up to Tyree and going man thanks for coming brother like mad respect to actually show up and show res support to us you know because you know we're all nobodies compared to him you know Tyree's a pretty big star in New Zealand after that event we had the second tryouts uh, this is where a few more battle rappers made their debut uh, you had people like Dotcom who made his debut man Dotcom is an awesome entertainer one of the best entertainers in New Zealand in my opinion uh, you also had people like AZ AZ showed up and had his debut here uh, you had uh, who else did you had KZ you know these guys who became uh, more uh, frequent battlers they kept battling more and more later on after this uh, the first battle of the day was me and Exceed me versus Exceed this was our first one on one acapella um, me and Exceed have been battling since the days of Estilo so you know this was another battle that sort of built up um, I had beaten them in previous battles like on stage and he had beaten me on stage I beat him at the second bar for bar he beat me at the third bar for bar I beat him quite a few times on Estilo and now this is the battle where we're going to meet up in both uh, you had Kid Crew versus Diss and Cuss that battle was okay it wasn't too bad uh, you had Deathwish versus KZ that battle yeah, that wasn't too bad uh, you had Dotcom versus Messiah uh, Dotcom clearly just killed that guy off man we never actually saw Messiah after that <laughs> he dropped the M-bomb Nigga, you need some school lessons. Nothing you can't even write more than a head of it. It's like another Kiwi guy dropping the end bomb. It's just like, oh my god. It's like, oh jeez, bro. What, where do these rappers come from in New Zealand? You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus Christ. We're not Americans. We're not black. We can't say that word like we are them. If you're gonna say the end bomb, you gotta refer to them. Jeez. How many times do I have to keep telling these guys? Uh, we also had AZ versus Surreal. AZ was actually very impressive. Uh, he's, he's a freestyler. He doesn't write. Spearman started running the league at this point and what happened was they brought a big camera crew with them like they they, they had like $30,000 cameras they had the like the big mics and the mic stands and I was just like mean bro that's dope you know I wasn't jealous or anything because I was the usual camera guy I was just like wow that's dope that is sick and then what happened was um the camera guy, the guy who was in charge of the film crew, comes up to me and he goes, um, hey Devastator, I'll send you all the footage so you can edit it. So what happened was, actually, Box Cutter actually come in and cut in right at that moment. And he goes, oh no, nah, sorry Stater, we don't want you as the video editor anymore. You know, you're helping Wellington and Christchurch, bro. We don't want you on our side anymore. And, and I was just like, uh, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, bro, you're playing both sides. And I, I just remember thinking like, fuck, what a selfish prick, bro. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know, where's Spearman? Why isn't Spearman telling me this? Oh, yep, there goes Mr. Old fucking pussy whacking, you know, he sends in box cutter to come and tell me, you know, he didn't pick up his balls and come tell me himself. I'm trying to build the country, man. I want the whole country to flourish, man. You know, I want the whole battle scene in New Zealand to be great. They just want Auckland and one outs to be great. They just want their league to be great. And I just remember thinking like, oh, you guys are fucking useless. Like that is pathetic. What an attitude to have. And then what happened was like Spearman ended up editing the videos. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
uh, you know, he hits me up on Facebook and he's like, oh, hey, bro, I'm having trouble editing these videos. Can you upload a trailer? Can you make a trailer out of your footage just to keep the fans happy? You know, they're all moaning at me and shit like that, bro. <laughs> I'm just on the other side laughing, man. I'm just like, you are one stupid fucking junkie cunt. Are you fucking serious? First, you kick me out and say you don't want me around as the editor anymore. And now he's hitting me up like a week and a half later. Oh, hey, bro, can you edit a video? <laughs> I'm just like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. When I was over in Oz, I was laughing at Spearman, bro. I was watching his league just go, you know, you had me involved, you know, for the first six or seven events. You know, the event was just getting better and better. It was rising. And then when Spearman got rid of me as the video editor and I went to Oz, it was just, it was like, goodbye. <laughs> I'm just on the other side of the ditch laughing my ass off, man. I am just cracking up. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, you're pathetic, Spearman. What a loser. Like, seriously, why would you get rid of your number one guy? <laughs> Why would you get rid of the biggest asset that you had? Before I went to Oz, I spent the last four days creating a DVD. And what was supposed to happen was Spearman was supposed to come around and help me make this DVD. But he didn't. You know, and and here he is moaning to people like, oh, look, man, he put himself all over the battle, all over the DVD. He put like seven of his battles on there. And I'm just like, fucking oath I did, cunt. You fucking piece of shit, bro. Fucking oath, bro. You know, I remember sitting there. I'm like, hey, bro, are you going to come over and help me make this DVD or what? Nah, he wasn't there. This guy's unbelievable. You know, he wasn't there to help me create the DVD. But when I created it, oh, he was straight over, man. Straight away, he came over. You know, he came over with some fucking chick man she looked like a teenager and shit you know he was probably up just banging her smoking crack while i was actually creating this dvd and because he didn't come to help me you know i ended up just saying oh well you know what fuck this cunt i'm just gonna put myself all over it fuck yous i did put the number one voted battle as number one though which was me versus heggs that was actually voted by everyone as the number one battle and that kind of pissed me off because i choked in the third round but i i did that for the fans all the people said yeah devastator versus heggs number one so I was like, all right, top 10 battlers, number one is going to be me versus Higgs. And the rest underneath that was just all my decision. I just put all those under there because I wanted to, you know, I, I didn't care. There's two things that he did with that DVD that was just fucking fully selfish, man. One, he sold copies of that DVD and didn't give me a cent. He didn't give me one fucking cent. I don't know how many copies he sold, but he kept all the money for himself. And the second thing was, he didn't even put my name on the DVD cover. He didn't even put on the cover, you know, DVD created by Devastator. He just put one ounce created by Spearman. I had the respect and the professionalism to put his name on the DVD itself. Like, when you watch it, you'll actually see one ounce created by Spearman on the footage when you watch it. You know, and but... Did he put my name on the DVD cover? Nah. He just put One Ounce created by Spearman. On the next episode of Five Years of One Ounce, d -La talks about a whole bunch of shit and a lot more. So fuck you. Tune in next time.